I'm back with uh, Simona Mangiante Papadopoulos. Uh, her website, Agape by Simona.com. You can follow her on Twitter at Simona Mangiante. Uh, Simona, you were talking about the Durham report and you're making the point that the, the Durham report does kind of cover up certain things or at least doesn't bring them to the forefront, such as the guy, Joseph Mifsud, who planted on George the idea that the Russians are spying, expecting him to take it back to the Trump campaign so that they could then build a case. So it was a complete frame up is the point I think you're making. Um, and, and your point, I think, at the end was also very important, which is that if we don't stop these people, they will never stop. So if there's no accountability, if these agents agencies aren't held to account, they'll keep going. Now, uh, as an indication or proof of that, uh, recently you received a letter from the Biden administration. Talk about who sent you the letter and what the letter was about. Well, Dinesh, I received this letter from far units of the DOJ and the letter was about inquiring uh, my potential registration under Foreign Agency Act as a result of my political run in my country, Italy. All right. So let's be let's explain what we're talking about. So FARA, uh, what is that? The federal uh, agency uh, registration, something like that. Basically, it's the agency that oversees the registration of people acting as foreign agents. Now, you, Simona, are not a foreign agent, you don't represent the Italian government, but you are an Italian citizen uh, and you ran for a, as I understand it, local office in Italy in the recent election and that was the provocation for sending the letter. I also note, by the way, that Italy is an ally of the United States, so we're not talking about a foreign government. Talk about what the letter said and the ways in it. I was going to call it a nasty letter, but it's probably more accurate to call it an intimidating letter, a threatening letter, uh, a kind of a chilling letter. Any normal person would be like, what is this? What did the letter actually say? Uh, so basically this letter uh, was uh, um, suggesting that I have some sort of uh, obligation to register under uh, foreign agency hacked so to be the, to be supervised by the American government specifically this unit of the American government as foreign agent acting on behalf of the Italian government uh, based on the misunderstanding i believe that i was running for a foreign constituency for italian americans now let's take a step back um it's very easy to access access public records and clarify this information everybody can google uh italian election i was actually running for a seat as a senator in the region of Turin, in the north of Italy, and my campaign was absolutely unrelated to the United States of America. So there were uh, no obligation to inform the American government or even less to be supervised for uh, my political campaign in Italy. Uh, furthermore, uh, there are some uh, very interesting aspects of this letter, which is particularly aggressive and uh, intimidating, though I'm not intimidated at all, actually, I found it uh, ridiculous, uh, in which basically they uh, said that during one of my rally uh, in uh, Italy, I was mentioning one of the, the people in the, in the crowd uh, started to praise Donald Trump. Now, the fact that I am known in my country, in the United States, as a Trump supporter is nothing to do with uh, uh, any interference. At, at the most, I was interfering, uh, trying to condition Italian opinion about uh, what American politi politics is and not the other way around. I'm saying I'm taking as an example Donald Trump in Italy. I'm not taking an example of Giorgio Meloni in America, which I did, of course, by matter of expressing my own freedom of speech and beliefs. Uh, now, this is absolutely outrageous uh, it, it gets even worse because uh, the uh, for absolutely no reason uh, there is absolutely no ground uh, for me to register under fara why because first and foremost i never received any money for my campaign i never campaigned in the united states i never lobbied lobbied in the united states i never communicated to any officials of the united states about my campaign nevertheless the Italian government, the Biden administration is asking me to disclose all my uh, communication with Italian officials and all members of the Italian government, which is absolutely incredible. I mean, Simona, weren't they also trying to 
track your political activity in the United States. And in fact, wasn't there, you came on my podcast several months ago. You were just, I think I asked you about Georgia Maloney and the Italian election. We may have also talked about American politics. I mean, you're a public figure. In fact, some, to some degree, you were made a public figure, uh, by the, the sort of police agencies of the U.S. government. Um, but weren't they also trying to imply that your activities, including appearing on this podcast, was somehow suspect and run made you a foreign agent of Italy? Yes, exactly. They list a number of podcasts, your podcasts, uh, other podcasts, including Joe Pags and uh, other appearances on TV show here in the United States to make the point that I was trying to influence American politics uh, through my opinions, while actually I was simply talking about my political run, which, which I think is of interest as people were asking me what's going on in Italy, uh, and expressing my opinion about the current prime minister of Italy, who happens to be a straight conservative, somebody whose, whose example is, cl is clearly not welcome uh, by the Biden administration. And uh, I became again a target. But what I found funny is that uh, only three years ago, I was under the radar of the American government for being a Russian asset. And now they upgraded me to an asset of an ally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's so, Simona, what's so crazy is that you're an Italian citizen is perfectly able to go on American TV, write articles. You're not rep necessarily representing a foreign government. If you do that, you're just a foreign citizen participating in a kind of broad debate about issues. Where does this stand now? Have you been able to get them to drop this nonsense? Or are you still going back and forth with them? Unfortunately, I'm still getting back and forth to, forward to that. My attorney was really clear into not only denying access uh, to all confidential information and protecting my freedom of speech in a way such explaining that talking about whatever activity I or whatever I believe I embrace has nothing to do with any foreign government uh, paying me to represent those interests abroad, then they should explain to both me and my lawyer what is the interest of the Italian government in having me talking about my belief or Italian politics in Italy, because there is also this aspect. So my attorney actually was really uh, um, sharp and tough into requesting the legal grounds of this uh, letter that uh, it's not nothing more, nothing less than another attempt of harassment. I believe I mean, at this I point. Yeah. It just shows me, Simona, that the targeting, the harassment has not ended and uh, and and the sort of police state, if you will, continues its continues its machinations even unto the present. Hey, Simona Mangiante, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Nash. Always a pleasure.